Um, I'm not sure if you can see it, but right in here, the gap, no, I can't, you can't see the axle from here, but uh, there it is. The gap between the fork on the rear wheel portion of the frame and the flat of the axle are too narrow. I want them to be able to slip on and off easily. So what I'll have to do is take the wheel off, measure the flat thickness, let's zoom out, look at this. I'm going to have to measure this flat thickness here and the, the gap in the frame and make them so that it can slide on fairly easily. Also these washers, uh, let's see if I can find another one. These washers here have a tab. That tab has to fit through a little hole in the back of the frame so that it stops it from trying to unwind itself. And those tabs need to be ground down a little bit. But I, I can take care of that stuff easily. I do have the thing inflated. I had a bad Schrader valve on my compressor. I'll show you the compressor over there if I can see it uh, over the car. Probably not. Oh, yeah, there it is, the very back. That compressor has a Schrader. Always have a compressor for your garage, otherwise you're not going to get things done. I also have a sink, a vise, my desk here, and then my other workbench over there, and lots of shelving. So I have shelving all the way around, and that really helps me keep things off the ground as much as it doesn't look like it. So we'll get back to you as soon as we uh, get this portion done. Just needs to be some filing and stuff like that. So. Better to do that now so that the thing fits right and everything's loose rather than get all bound up. A little up. bit of an update here. Um, we did finally get the wheel on. I had to spend a long time on the, well, I guess you'd call it the inlet portion of the frame in order to get it to fit both the washer tab, which you can see right here, and the washer itself and the flat-sided axle, which is really the core of this. When I was done tightening it up to torque specs, I also made a point of checking the wheel to make sure it was centered, wasn't warped, and uh, spun freely. Those three items. And it does all those. So this is great. We're going to move on to step two. Um, it fits on the tire, the rim, nicely, although I was a bit worried about that. And the whole thing fits on the bike nicely. Since the bike has black trim, I basically wanted a black wheel. They offered me a chrome run one right away or a black one a few weeks later. I said, no, I want the black wheel. So all that's gone extremely well, although I had to do a lot of grinding on the tab on the washer, which I, met, I showed you there. And I had to do a lot of filing on the frame portion to fit the flat side of the axle all the way in so that the axle seated well into that fork. It's as good as it'll ever be, and it's not going to go anywhere. So I'm pretty happy with that. Before I quit for the day, I wanted to show you a little trick. Uh, I'm going to replace these brake handles, I've got aluminum polish all over me, uh, with the ones that are supplied with the electric bike because they coordinate motor movement and motor braking with your actual braking, which is some, a feature I really wanted to make sure I had. The other thing I have to do is uh, pull the crank out to put the crank sensor in there. That is a cadence sensing uh, tool that is used for seeing when you're starting to give uh, the bike a little extra torque. But anyway, this is an old motorcycle trick where you tuck an air hose in between the handlebar and the grip. You can feel it inflate, and uh, these came out quite easily even though they've been on there for, oh, 25 years, 26 years. So uh, they all come out quite simply. This is going to be a little trouble towards the end, but then we go the other direction. So it's really quite simple. Helps a lot. Just pops it right off. So that's a trick you can use for handlebars without having to use a lot of grease and oil and other things. Is to simply use a compressor. You don't need a lot of airflow and use one of these pointed tools. This is one of the most common tools I use all the time. And this one's getting kind of worn out. I've already broken off the time here. But uh, it's something I will use always. Blowing things out clean rather than using liquid. Uh, over here with the Europa, I can quickly blow all the dust out rather than touching it. So it's sort of a dustless cleaning. So I wanted to show you that. It's just a part of the toolbox you need to work on 
bikes, cars, and everything. Well, after a minor bit of straightening out, we've uh, managed to remove, let's back out here so you can see it, we managed to remove the uh, end grips using the old air pressure technique. I now need to remove these uh, brake levers, front and rear, these, and put a throttle in here, so I'll have to slide this uh, gear shift inboard, slide in my GS GPS mount inboard, and put the new grips which are provided. Uh, why do we need them? Well, these grips, if you can see them here, uh, have a, a little electric connection, and so when you press the brake lever, it uh, not only applies your physical brakes, but uh, uses the motor instead of as a motor as a mechanical brake. So I think it's regenerative, but at least it's braking. And uh, you really need that because you don't want to try to brake against the power of the motor. So that's a great feature. And I didn't know that this had it, but I'm really glad that it did. Uh, once we're done with these, I think tomorrow uh, I will have to get what's called a uh, lower set. I'll show you what that means. Uh, remover and that uh, is for the crank. Uh, we have to remove the, the crank pedal here and here because I'm putting in a sensor on this side. That will be the last really major installation I need to do until this project's done. Uh, this is from uh, the, the vendor of the project is Electric Bike Outfitters and they've been uh, very, very good. Uh, I had some questions why was the wheel rim too narrow? narrower than my old wheel rims and they were fine and also why was the wire on the left when they talk about a wire on the right and they're doing the front wheel drive and they said well it's a rear wheel drive thank you appreciate your help blah blah so okay we're going to take these off move things around and put the new ones on okay i'll just show you briefly if you notice here there's uh, actually a small slit and both of these cable stays and they work together exactly how I'm not sure. I think this one just follows this one. This adjusts it in and out and the other one just follows it. You have to line them up and furthermore there's a slit here and line them up to pull the cable free and then pop it out of the uh, hole under here which is hidden from view but it it's, sits right here and slides out so that's out and we'll do the same for the other side and uh, I'll just uh, do that myself. So what I did here was loosen up, get you uh, point in the right direction. I loosened up uh, this brake, these shoes, so I could tilt it outwards and free this cable from here and that loosened that up so I will from this point be able to, and it's buried inside the uh, down tube, it goes in and back out again right here. I will be able to uh, zoom up again here. I'm not sure why my zoom is so poor, but the front brake goes through the tube and back out here. And I'll use the same technique here to uh, line these up and pull the cable out here. And once we're done with that, we can take these off and put the new ones in. Okay, I was able to get uh, both of those out, both sets of cables out. I'll leave them where they are because I'm just going to put it all back together again. And then I need to uh, release the uh, cables. Now these are fortunately all metric, so my metric uh, X wrenches and can't uh, live without them if you're doing a uh, uh, Japanese, or in this case Japanese bike, you're not going to be able to live without them. So once you loosen them up, they can be easily pulled off. And uh, I'm hoping that the diameter of the other ones is the ones that go in are going to be exactly the same, so let's just hope that's the case. So, let's see, we're easily able to get these off. <coughs> well, so easily. Probably flared out the very because I probably pounded the uh, mirror bar stop in there, so that's okay. We're done with that, now we're going to put the new ones on. However, I think I'm going to slide this gear shift in slightly, and that's probably, the gear shift is probably a 8mm, so we'll go find one of those wrenches.
and get back. Now, let's spend a minute before I, or while I'm doing all this, to sort of uh, make some adjustments here. I'm going to move, this is the GPS mount, which I finally got the actual bracket off and slide it as far inwards as I possibly can. Uh, might be easier than I said. Uh, easier said than done, that is. Because uh, I want to get it all the way into the middle. And I'll probably have to use a bit of a, a hammer to knock it into place. It will slide some of the things out of the way. I say I have some wrap tape. So what I think I'll have to do is completely do it. But anyway, I want to move the GPS in, the brake shift, the throttle, and then the uh, brakes. Or the brakes, then the throttle. Yeah, the brakes would be, uh, I'm not sure which way they'll go. Then this is the light. I'm going to slide him all the way inwards. Uh, this is a clip on light I have, since I don't have any other headlights. Uh, then I'll move the other shifter in, and the uh, throttle and LED, probably throttle then LED. Throttle. Brake then LED, that's the throttle. Late night. Brake then LED. So we're going to get it all laid out. When I'm done, I'll show you what I've done. But it's important to consider all your layout, uh, what you're going to do before you just start tightening things up. Okay, as you can see here, um, I've actually laid this out. I slid these way in board. I could probably move them outboard. Not very difficult. The GPS is fine where it is. This sweeps outwards. This is the gear shift. So I'm happy with it where it is. These are fine. They're right at the edge of the brake and the throttle. Turns out the throttle going outboard of the brake worked the best uh, right here. Brake, throttle, grip. Uh, that worked very, very well. Let's get that in the better scene there. So I'm going to now repeat this on the left-hand side and get everything taken care of. Once I do that, I will reattach the brake lines and get everything adjusted. That's probably where I'll stop for today. But that's not bad. Uh, pretty good, actually. I have to figure out how I'm going to take the crank off in order to get the crank sensor on. And from there, the rest of the wiring is literally plug-in. So I have an LED module and the other brake to put on this side. So I'm going to do that next. Uh, one of the tricks I use is right in there is to use a uh, this air tip. I know that the vendor said a lot of people don't have these, but this item is gold. And it just goes in between the hand grip and the tubing of the, of the handlebar and it inflates the whole thing. It, it actually builds a gas around inside here and this thing can slide in and out. And this has been on there for 30 years. All the stuff I just took off had been there, well, since 89. So we're talking uh, 27 years, 26 years thereabouts. I think I bought it in the summer of 89, maybe the summer of 90, I don't remember now. Uh, so it's, it's quite old, but again, I haven't put much, much hours on this thing, so that's why I'm doing it to this bike. So. Anyway, I just wanted to show you there is that little trick. Uh, we'll zoom out here and uh, commence on the other side.